Greetings, greetings, how's it going? And welcome again, uh, where we talk about anything and everything around real estate. And uh, we do this in Johannesburg, Cape Town, Pretoria. And today it is a Saturday evening and uh, we do what is called an open mic. Open mic is where you get to ask the questions. And uh, today I am um, accompanied by my co-host, business partner, Reta, how's it going? Hello, it's very cool to be here tonight. Awesome I stuff. Anything better to do on a Saturday? <laughs> it is, it is. And um, ladies and gentlemen, if you've never been here before, uh, what happens here is it is everything about real estate, passive income. We talk about it, and uh, we talk about buying properties, and we hold them for rentals, and that's why we do this for. Uh, what that's why we call it passive income and uh, today we want to talk about something that's very key especially for some of you who are doing this uh, or wanting to do this as uh, a passive income of sort so uh, we set aside this day as a Saturday uh, eight o'clock to nine o'clock and you get to answer ask all the questions that you want to ask but we also have a bit of teaching that goes through with it and um, Today we're going to be talking about essentials tools. You know, we are living in the COVID world where uh, there's essential workers and everything like that, but we're going to be talking about essential tools. So tools that you need actually for you to be successful in finding the good deals, not just finding them and then obviously also managing them. So we're going to walk here around something else that we call a, a deal calculator. And if you have never been exposed to a deal calculator, don't worry. We're going to talk about it a little bit in depth. But I thought that uh, let Reta and I have this conversation because Reta does things differently and there is no right or wrong in this. Uh, I do things um, um, in another way and collectively the two of us, you can also piggyback on what we do. So we'll start off with a deal calculator and out of the deal calculator, we'll then go in into a specific um let's assume within that deal what is it exactly needs to be put into that deal and further to that how do you calculate returns and all of that and we'll take assumption of one particular deal is that good Rita? what do you think then yo i hope um people are awake on a saturday night because you know numbers is always a hectic topic but um uh, I'm sure everybody will be able to follow us. We're going to try and make it as simple and as clear as possible so that anybody can follow no matter what your skill and your experience levels are. 100%. I, I really like that. Um, when I just want you to ask you a couple of questions before we jump in into the deal calculator itself, uh, because that's going to be our anchor for the essential tools that one needs actually to find a good deal, manage it, and uh, just make sure that it is profitable um you bought a couple of properties long before you found the deal calculator did you even think about utilizing a deal calculator at the time when you were buying your own properties i mean your first house that you bought that you're staying in <laughs> no i didn't even know it, that you should be doing that i didn't know it existed um it was just like oh here's a pretty house you know let's let's buy it let's live in it um yeah and i mean i, I never actually even bought properties for the purpose of making money out of them um, in the investor sense of the way obviously long term you think oh i'll make some money but not on a you know rental type of, of situation awesome stuff okay good and, and I'm in the same boat exactly, uh, you know, on my first property, um, I, I didn't know anything about a deal calculator. So um, we're going to jump into it and um, we're going to go into presentation mode. I'm going to look here where we can find our um, right and we're going to go there just now and we will get through to see actually the um, the deal calculator that we are going to be using tonight, right? And on there, I'm trusting, Reta, can you see it from your side? I can see it, yeah. Okay, stop. So 
the, the, this is a deal calculator. Why would you want to utilize a deal calculator? And for some of you, you might not know uh, what is a deal calculator, but basically whenever you're going into a deal, it is pre-populated here. Don't worry about it. We're going to go through everything that you need to do. Um, but actually, maybe Reta, before we actually start sharing all of these deal calculators, maybe let's come back to um, just talking about from from when you are finding a property because there's so many ways that you can find a property right uh i think let's just walk it through nicely in terms of you've got a deal that you're looking for and some people actually don't even know how to get to that deal right so what are the tools that you need to have for you to get to a deal i think we just jumped into the deal calculator thinking that you know already people know where do they find the deals from and that is wrong isn't it? yeah no totally and i think you know sometimes we also overcomplicate it and we people you know when they talk think about investment property they're like oh i need to buy from an auction to have a good deal whereas that's not that's not always true and i think most of my really good deals actually came from the normal suspect um, places that everybody would go and, and look for a property. It's just how do you look at that? How do you use that tool and look at things a little bit differently to, to find a good deal? And I mean, for that, I am, first place I go always is the usual suspects, property 24 private and private property, and a little bit of Gumtree as well. Uh, to do some nice uh, searches for needs TLC or something like that. So those are my always my first port of call. What is available in the area, and what can I expect when I go to a specific area? So those are the the two basic ones that I look at, and then I also look at um, Sheriff HQ or Green Gazette or Sierra Terre for um, you know auction type of properties. But I must say I hardly ever actually even use that i mainly just go to to the normal uh, channels okay but what are those normal channels right no property 24 and private property and gum tree those okay two. awesome awesome so so what i did today is that um so reta goes through those channels with her and uh, we've got some similarities here and uh, the similarities that i want to hang on to is that property 24 so when you are finding properties there are all these other websites that are readily available uh, and these websites you can literally jump in and you can start finding properties but i want to speak to another group of people that will say hey we've been onto these uh, websites but actually we can't find properties like how do you start right and i would like us to go we know we're not being paid with property 24 to actually you know talk about their their website today we just like it because we find good deals there right mm -hmm. but it's not about property 24 it's also about the skill that we have now honed in um that now allows us to be able to identify uh, good uh, opportunities that come out of it so in a bit we're going to go through onto property 24 now but i also want to stress out the fact that the one basic essential skill, and this is essential skill number one that you probably need, you need to be able to be able to find relationships, right? Mm -hmm. um, Rita and I, we've been um, finding relationships with particularly estate agents, right? Particularly with estate agents, because these guys here, they are well trained in terms of going out there to find pro uh, opportunities when people are wanting to sell their properties who do they think about they don't think about you and me as an investor they think about going into the estate agents isn't so the question that i want to ask of you Rita, is where do you find estate agents <laughs> on property 24. <laughs> yeah on property 24 that's correct yeah. um in in the basic way you can literally do it is that I'm, I, I created um, I created today um, on property 24 um, sort of like my my, my first uh, I'm, I'm gonna go through here 
to, to my property 24 and share. Okay, good. I think it should be sharing now uh, because it does indicate to me that I can stop sharing. Can you see it now? Yeah, I can see it now. Okay, awesome stuff. So this is the website for Property24. Uh, for many of you, you just go through and there and then you click on www.property24.com. And this is, you can see my credentials there. And um, normally if I'm coming through in here and I'm gonna ask Reta, like the guys that are coming in now, uh, I think this is where maybe we can ask the guys to be asking questions as well as we go along. Um, so the first thing that we want to address is how do you find the estate agents, right? And um, if you're in the comments there, uh, just give me a name of a suburb or of a town that we can start to go and look for um, some estate agents there. Uh, in the comments there, just drop us a name of a suburb or of an area and we can already start looking for estate agents in that particular area. Um, and I just want to make this something that is for you uh is there anyone there Rita, that has given us a name mm -hmm. no i don't have a name up here okay we're still waiting for that right but whilst you're still typing away there and um this is what Pre pro 24 it looks like you've got your for sale so this is the tab and it talks about properties that are on for sale it talks about commercial properties that are on for sale what is commercials is anything else uh, other than residential. Someone asked me the other day, where do you get the repossession list? Do you get a list of properties that are repossessed? And here they are. Property 24 has got a uh, repossession list, right? And auctions, if you are one of those people that are looking for auctions, there you are. Uh, properties that are going to be on shore. So you can actually go and physically see them. Developments for sale, right? Um, and it goes on and goes on, right? Something that's also very important is property reports. We are going to jump into that. That's also one of the two. And um, I am going to go through now to that's um, the first one. I just have one submission here from Sal. Hi, Sal. Thank you. From he says East Rand. East Rand. Okay. So we're going to look for East Rand. Um, and uh, they goes through uh, the two rent, um, you know, but we're not talking about two rent today, but it's also another essential tool that we're going to come back to. Um, but basically, these are all the other tips. Calculators, we'll come to the calculators. These are also important. Um, and there you are, that's, you know, the, the uh, um, my profile that I literally activated today. Something that's called favorites, I'm gonna come back to it a little bit later, but let's look for East Rand, okay? East Rand. Boom. There is East Rand. East Rand Gauteng. We put it in there and it is under for sale. That's what we want. And we're going to leave this area kind of like open. We're just looking for East agents, isn't it? So, but if we're looking for, let's assume that we are looking for a house, right? A house. I like looking for houses, freestanding houses. That's my thing, right? And let's just say up to around about 4 million. That's the max. And boom, it's already telling me that there's 7,000 properties. So behind this, let's just assume if there is one property, one estate agent, there is 7,000 estate agents. Okay, fine. If we say each estate agent's got two properties, that means that there's 3,000 estate agents that we can find, right? Okay, let's jump into it. We click search and we're going to wait for it and out of waiting for it and there we are okay there's some properties now i'm just going to pick a random property that i think that maybe this mine might, might be a good one um wow some of them are like in a this is really like a really nice property is it really for investment purposes eh, eh, not really right um uh, there's something there as well and this this looks like it's a new development areas. You can look at all of these uh, that are coming up. Okay, so remember we are looking for for estate agents, right? So let's look at this property here. It is in Clopper Park, right? I'm just gonna hit on on it, 
and it is going to show me the actual property itself. I don't know any estate agents in the East Rand. And this time round, I am going to go here. It says contact agent, and I'm going to hit show contact number, right? Alert, right? And there is an estate agent called a letter, right? There is the number. And in most cases, they might even have a cell phone number. Uh, there's this, uh, their cell phone number here. I'm promoting a letter. I don't even know who a letter is. Okay. So you found one estate agent. So you put that in your bag. That's one estate agent, right? And then we go in into another um, uh, another house. There's the one in Pomona. We're looking for estate agents to work with. Again, boom. Oh, Rosalind Nkosi. There, Rosalind's uh, cell phone number is on here, and their landline number is on here. Mm, okay, they've got a bit of a property. All right. Oh, Rosalind actually works for Palm Golding Properties. Okay. Now that I am getting along with Rosalind, what else can I do here? What are some of the other properties that she's selling? So I can jump in here and click on View All Properties for Sale with Rosalind, right? And these are all the other properties that she's selling. Now, Reta, I just want to stop here and come back to you uh, to have a conversation quickly with you. Um, when you find an estate agent like this, so you've just found them online, what do you do? What's, what's your next couple of steps now? You like this area? Well, I would definitely, um, if I if I like the agent, obviously get in contact with the agent, ask them about the area, and just get their view of what is on the market in the area, what's happening there, is there something being built, is there, because they are the area experts. And I check yeah. where, especially where sometimes you'll find that, um, you know, Pam Golding or, or even one of the smaller agents are actually dominating that area and then you call right. them as well right so i i try i try and pick it like that um and i'll call them and i'll find out what's happening in the area uh what are they seeing how quickly our property is selling and you just have a conversation with them and then the next step definitely is to explain to them what you're looking for and i can almost guarantee you that nine out of ten times they can have something that you might not even have seen on property 24 that will fit what you what you're looking for and they will then take you and meet up with them i think that's the other important thing talk to them and then go and meet with them um you you really build rapport with that person and you understand how how the person works and whether you can work with them only once you really go out with them and see what they what they're showing you is actually what you describe because sometimes they'll take you um, to see a property and then it's nothing like what you said you're looking for so you need to find that person that can understand what you're looking for um, and only by going and looking at stuff that they are are sort of um, identifying that fits what you want only then will you really know is this a person that I can work with long-term? So um, I'm going to do something a little bit ridiculous here. Uh, I'm hoping that it's going to show. So I've got a group, right, of estate agents. So I, I, my, my phone, I've got groups for everything, you know, my phone. And can you all see that? Yeah. Right. Can you see my number of estate agents there? Oh, How many people? Off. The light went off of the phone. Okay. Right. What's let's that? see. Oh. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's start again. There you go. Uh, let's see. 92. I got 92 estate agents, but not all of them here have given me good deals. And not all of them, I've deleted some actually over the years you know what i mean and so number one not everyone is going to work with me number two not everyone is going to understand me even though they they want to work with me and number three not everyone that is an estate agent who likes me and wants to work with me and understands me also have 
a deal at that particular time, right? And I mean, right now we're buying almost like what a deal every other quarter. I mean, we have slowed down with COVID, but we are picking up now as well. Mm, we are definitely. And once you you bought something from that person, they then know exactly what you're looking for, exactly how you work, how you operate, and they will find you more of the same. Copy and paste. Just bring me more of the same. And um, and then it really it really starts um, growing and speaking up because they know you're a serious buyer, they know exactly what you want, and and they will really go the extra mile for you. Awesome stuff. So so this this is open open mic, and we come out here every every Saturday. And the point here of open mic is that you get to ask questions as we go along. Um, and uh, we've we've had open mics for the last couple of uh, weeks, and all of these videos are here. And you, if you have any questions as we go along, today we are talking about essential tools that you need to make good deals. And we've just finished now talking about an estate agent. How do you find estate agent? And we found the one website that really works for both me and Reta. Reta spoke about a couple of ones. Um, and I just gravitated onto one that I like, which is the Property24. They're not paying us for, for, for promoting their website. We just like it because it brings good deals to us. I'm going to go back to Property24, but this um, time around... Question here, so I'm going to interrupt you. So there's some interesting questions coming through. Yeah. Um, one that says, are there special estate agents that work with investment properties? I've, I've, I have found that it's a yes and no answer for me. And Rita, you can also answer that question. Um, I think the traditional estate agents, they are very few. And I want to say very few. And I'm, I'm talking about maybe one in a thousand or even one in 10,000 that really understand how to work with an investor. Um, but I've been fortunate that of the, actually, you know what? It is three in a hundred, and do you know why I'm counting? Why I get to three into three into one into one hundred? Because out of your list of ninety-two, there's three that you work with that that you bought from. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. So so so, uh, out of the hundred that I've got, I mean, some other estate agent. Uh, I think I probably have like close to one hundred and fifty estate agents. Because some I miss, you know, uh, by the time I started logging in, some of my estate agents, you know, uh, the group was not there. I didn't start thinking like that, systemizing my stuff. Um, but the reality is that for every 100, kind of like, I found three. And but all of those three, two are really like good working horses, if I may call them that. Um, I know that some people might not like me calling estate agent working horses, but the that's what they are. They they bring in de good deals to me. So out of the three, they 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 understand very very well what I do. But I had actually to spend time with them, educating them what I'm looking for, and why I wouldn't buy this one. Why I wouldn't? I mean, some like today, I was talking to one of my estate agent, and I, I was telling him of a deal that I want to do that he presented to me, and I spoke about uh, a covering bond. And he said to me, what is a covering bond? You know, and I would think an estate agent would know that. Um, but it's also about you educating and engaging your estate agent. Rita, I don't know if you want to answer that one differently as well. Um, definitely. I think there's, there's a few of them that kind of understand what you're looking for and so on. There's a person in Cape Town that I literally I bought three properties from her right yet she will still send me stuff that doesn't fit what i want you know but it's fine i just I'm, I'm at least now able to quickly scan through what she sends me and i'm like no 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 yes so <coughs> oh, excuse me so that's um you know even though they might not give you exactly and only what you're looking for that could actually still work um by just being a good active agent in the area Okay, cool. So, so essential number one, essential tool number one is 
find a way in which you can find to find a relationship with people in general you know uh, that's essential tool number one essential uh, essential tool number two is find estate agents it's actually a skill to actually find estate agents that you can work with and by the way estate agents are not the only people that but find estate agents that can actually work for you right traditionally estate agents would work for the seller uh, but in this time this we're flipping it around we're saying that go and find the properties that i like i'm gonna buy them anyway i'm ready right and they, you don't pay them they get paid with a buyer but they're working for you i mean that's that's the holy grail of real estate there isn't um totally um i totally agree on that and i mean if once once you have that person and you and they're working for you um i mean this this lady that i work with in cape town she's so amazing because um whenever i'm not happy with something right i'm like yeah but i don't understand this i don't want to do that she's like a bulldog on that seller you know she will make him do what i need him to do and agree to what yeah. i need, need him to agree and she doesn't take no for an answer and she'll find ways to get around whatever um challenges is in the deal to make it work for me because she knows that that seller yes he might fail but he's busy dating three other estate agents right but she right. knows i'm a good buyer that that will buy and she's going to get money basically from me even though it's the seller paying it but it's due to me buying that she can get it from him so therefore she's really um she goes out of her way to to make it a deal work for me she won't say okay well you can do this you can do that and all that but i need to say that i need to say i want this 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 but she makes it happen and fast as well um she won't let go <laughs> She doesn't That's give up on anything. She will make it work. <laughs> yeah. So, Reta, let's let's jump in now. So, you've got the relationship. You found the estate agent, and now they've brought you a deal, right? And I'm gonna go back to Property Twenty Four, uh, my dear friend, Property Twenty Four. You are here again, and this time round, now you've got this property here, and we just know that. Palm Golding is giving us any. I've, we've never bought anything from Palm Golding, have we? Nah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Okay. Right. Um. So let's just assume that we found a deal in Pomona here, and it was this lady here, the estate agents that we were talking to. I don't remember what's her name, Rosaline, right? And it was Rosaline who just introduced us to this deal and we like it or oh, there is the street name of that pro particular property reta you've got a certain skill that you enjoy to check out here on uh, property 24 around uh, recent sales in and around pomona you want to talk about this section here um yeah that's like my favorite thing to go and look at um and for the guys that's watching, I actually did a, a whole 20 minute video just on that. So you're welcome to go and find it on the YouTube channel. Um, but that is, that is, I love to go there and to check what, what, you know, what was this actual sold prices of similar properties in the area and to make sure that I'm not overpaying. Um, and I think also the, there's lots of other um, tools as well, that's paid tools that you can use. Um, you can use TPN, you can do Lightstone, and it can get very, very technical. But as a first step, even though it's only 28 grand, 75 cents, but <laughs> even though it's, it's not expensive to do, I just like to first, before I do that effort and go through that process, to just quickly look at what is in the area what what is selling in that specific area and how much is it selling for and i mean it's very simple you can literally click on that link and it will take you to the analysis of the area and the actual and not what it was marketed for because what you see as advertised they might advertise something for two million but it actually only sells and it transfers for 1.5 million so that's why that sold prices are so important because it'll give you a very different view from what is being advertised versus what is actually happening and what our property is actually selling for. 
Yeah. So what I've just done here, Reta, you speak of um, other tools that you can utilize. So on Property24, it just gives you a little bit of a snippet. But you can actually zoom in onto a particular property. And um, I decided let, this is the one property that we recently bought. Uh, and that's why I, I've pulled this one. And, and now, now that you have that picture there, I also want to add the first thing that I actually do, um, even before I get in my car to go and look at anything. So I just go into Google Maps, I Google the address, I drop the little man and I walk up and down in the street with my little Google Maps, <laughs> Google Earth or whatever. That, yeah. is, that is the very first thing that I do. And then I go and do the report. Awesome stuff. Right. So let's talk about property. This is Lightstone. Um, we subscribe to this. They don't pay us for talking about this. Uh, so that's not a review for, you know, them getting paid to us. We just like them because we utilize them. It's a tool that we use. Remember, we're talking about essential tools here. What does this gives you? It gives you the property details, right? What is it exactly? Um, I have seen people that get it in an address for people and they can't get to the place. Coordinates, coordinates, right here. You can just click on it, street view, it takes you into Google. Um, Reta, we, we've just, we just bought this property like recently. Um, it gives you also, when was that, this property here? When was it last, what was the last sold price for it? So the current owner who bought this property, they bought this property in 2004 for 545. So boom, you you, you have that. Uh, you got the actual land size there. And this is where exactly where it is. This property, you're going to love it. It's a like proper dump, but we're not buying it for the, for the dump. There's some exciting stuff that's going to come out of there. I wanted to say it's our property because it is a dump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we can name it whatever we want. Um property twenty uh, uh Lifestone then gives you an average of roundabout of twenty properties, right? So it takes a whole bunch of properties within that area. Uh, I'm not so sure what is the the radius um that they take, what is the maximum? But here you can see here 736 meters away from the property that you're looking for. In this case, that's the distance from that property. Then they're taking all of these properties on the last sale price, all of it. But this is all recent. Look at that, 2019, 2019. I'm, I'm sure there's a 2020 somewhere here. Um, not even. So there were no transactions for 2020 on here. But bearing in mind, I also pulled this report here in 2019. Yeah, so I put this last last year when we were buying this property. Now, out of that, it then gives you a comparable. What is the price for that property here? And then it gives you a one point, uh, one point three kind of like right. The municipal evaluations and all of those things, estimated municipal uh, monthly rates and taxes for that property. Just need to double check with the sellers or with the estate agent and is there a bond in this property yes there is a bond there it tells you which bank it is and all of that and the beauty the why i like to utilize um tp uh lightstone is that i get actually to manipulate the data isn't when i am working around it so for instance if I know the street and I see like, for instance, here, uh, the first property here, if it is like a slightly bigger property, you see this one here is 1,280. So it's a very much like for like, isn't right? So I'm going to take that. Okay, that's good. That's good. So all of these property in terms of sizes, they are all like for like, you know, they're not too far away. But now I'm also starting to have smaller ones. But then I might also want to come back. I might know that one property, this property might have sold for like three million for argument reasons, but it's a six bedroom here, right? So for that reason, I'm going to take this property away because it's, it's queuing my data, right? It's not a like for like, but I can only know that if I know the area that I'm investing in, or I know the area that I'm walking in, one easy way that you can actually know 
and this here this skill here that i'm uh, i'm going to tell you here a lot of you you might be thinking ah tj this kind of like very old school it's called walk the streets so you literally walk in that street and you can see ah, that house there looks like it's a 10 10 bedroom the house than the house that you're looking at which is like so tiny so obviously from a rand value you can now assess and you can go through into lifestone and you can take it off and that's kind of like tool number five right if i'm counting but i'm gonna stop counting because i'm gonna confuse myself as i count um but that that's another essential tool that you need reta now that we've got um the light stone right and um and we say that we want actually to make sure that whatever we are doing we're walking through on our deal calculator right so the market price can you see my screen here on my yeah. excel so yeah. so the market the market price now on that particular property maybe the estate agent that property market price was around about 1.3 isn't it? yeah okay so on here this is where we're going to put our 1.3 because that's the market value that there is all right the purchase price will come back to it a little bit later and um i can make an assumption that maybe let's put in uh let's say eight hundred thousand. so this is for me now what is equity obtained Ob equity obtained is the difference between these two right and you can see my purchase price is pulling there from the top and i am going to be looking for a loan and of around about um uh, 800 000, that's what i'm wanting to get so that's a hundred percent bond so that i do not have a bond, um uh, a deposit on it um so where do i get the market price from from the lightstone report right that's where i get it from and then i come on here right and this now i'm populating that then there's what they call bond transfers and duty there is a website that is called uber.co.za uh, um, but seeing that we have been working on property 24 can we go back to property 24 maybe does it still show um um what do you call that does it still show how to calculate uh, um transfer fees and things like that have you used uh, property 24 for that it's actually very funny i didn't i've never used property 24 for it but um yeah i mean the calculations are the same anyway so it doesn't really matter which one you use right can you see my um my uh property 24 side yeah okay i've never actually used it before but le let's give it a shot right purchase price there we are eight hundred thousand okay and the loan is eight hundred thousand there's now a little bit of a trying error was we have and okay it's pulling it together okay that's great so it's taking my purchase price it's taking my loan here and it's telling me that my total bond and transfer is forty eight thousand okay how is it broken it's broken into board registration and the transfer there and boom that's what it, so I, I like to take round figures so i'm going to take my forty-eight thousand here and i'm going to make it forty-nine thousand. so i'm going to go back to my spreadsheet all right and i'm going to populate it now on forty-nine thousand on this particular property here okay for budgeting purposes let's just call it 50 for ease of mathematics right so we're just gonna say property 24 property 24 that's where i got that from okay and we're not going to worry about that sourcing thing here it's a conversation for another day if you are wanting to do uh, sourcing as a business or whatnot uh, we can talk that about another day now whilst i'm on this property here um maybe there could be some renovations that i need to do on this property i'm going to take in a hundred thousand it's just an assumption but i need to take my builder onto that property and um, that's where i am going to get that hundred thousand so it's my builder 
So now you can see it's calculating there, my buying costs, this is 150,000. If I had put this on, on 80%, let's assume, you see there there's a deposit of 160, and you can see there my buying cost and that and that is going to come up to my total cash in the deal. But for this exercise, let's make it 100%, okay? Now, we did speak about rates and taxes. We did see it on Lightstone, you remember that? What was the number there for Lightstone, Reda? Do you remember? I think it was 784, if I remember correctly. 784 will make it 800. Uh, insurance on a property like that one, uh, let's peg it on 300. And um, there we are. So now we've got 300 and 800. These are kind of like our holding costs. And um, got a bond there. And now if this property is for rental purposes, right? Rental purposes, right? Let's just assume that this property here, uh, we, we just work on this property here. So the property has got a main house, right? Let's say it's got a main house. We're doing this for, um, and it's renting out for 10,000 rand. And I'm going to take you guys to another tool that we like to utilize. So it's 10,000 rand and it's one day. And let's assume it's got two cottages, right? Two cottages. This is assumptions because we have we've haven't been to the property. Um, so it's got two cottages. And let's say one cottage is 5,000 and another one is 4,500. It's one day and it's one day. So all in total, I can actually bank around about 20,000 rand. At the moment, uh, interest rates is around about sitting at 8% uh, 7% prime. So this is prime plus one on 20 years. We're talking about 6,600. You can see the rates and taxes is what we populated on the top there. Insurance. Maybe, um, bond repayment, you can maybe just um, go to Property24 as well and use the calculator there because not everybody will know the formula to put in. 100%. Okay. So we're going to go to Property24 again. And out of that, we're going to say, hey, uh, where is my Property24? So Pro 24 is kind of like a one-stop shop, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure these calculators sneaked in here before, after I, I started using it the first time. <laughs> is 800,000, zero deposit. Um, this is showing you prime, you see, prime interest rate, which is 7%. Uh, we're assuming that you might get like an 8%. It's a 20-year loan. And there you are at 6,691, which is very close to what we were uh, showing on the other side, right? So with that, I want to go back to our spreadsheet. And now there you are, 6,691. Uh, that's a prime plus one. A lot of people get a prime plus one plus two, but you know your affairs with your bond originator. And uh, before... Uh, beforehand so you can populate that on your own if you are managing this property with someone else obviously a management fee you will ask your estate agent upfront it's generally anything from six to ten percent and um, that's what you're going to be paying for your property manager the void in the area i'm gonna i'm gonna jump into another tool now um, that we like to utilize so if this was a real property we could be making some good money here uh, it's got a return on investment or cash on cash of around about 54%, right? Which is good. Right. I think I'm going to stop here. And Reta, I want us to go through, um, let's jump on to another tool, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got the, there's the deal calculator. But now let's speak about the other tool, the TPN tool, uh, especially the investor pack. What's your thoughts around that? Oh, that is like my favorite tool of them, of them all, really. I love to get the um, investors report from TPN, which gives you all the rental amounts in the area. Um, and it, it goes into such a lot of detail, and you can see whether people are going to pay, how much are they going to pay, because it's always a tricky situation when you want to rent a place out and you don't know what to charge for. 
You don't want to undercharge because then you're losing out. You don't want to overcharge because your place is going to be empty. What are the type of tenants that you're going to get? Are they going to pay? What's the chances of them actually paying? All of that you can get in your TPN Investors Report. And this thing is the awesomest part of it all is it's literally 28 rands. If you're not signed up or a member with them or anything, it's 28 rand 75 the last time I used it, which was less than a week ago. So um, this, is, this is my first port of call. Whenever I'm renting in an area where I haven't rented before, even if it's just a neighboring suburb, I pull up this thing and I just double check and make sure that my rentals are real. And I'm not thinking, oh, but my place is going to be so beautiful, I can get 10,000. But actually, the most you can get in that area is 5,000. So it's just a reality check for yourself. I love this report. Absolutely love it. Awesome stuff. Whilst we are going, whilst we are, we are still I'm going, I... am saying this. <laughs> say, say that again. I think I must get, uh, I, must, I must talk to Michelle. They must start paying me for saying these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm promoting it everywhere I go for free. <laughs> it, but it is a good tool, right? Um, but Reda, I want to speak here about something else. Not everyone is really a property investor, right? For some people, this is gibberish for them. Um, but I always say that, you know, if you're interested in property and you actually don't want to do it, you can invest alongside people like uh, with like us. You know, at a minimum of uh, hundred thousand, you can get uh, nothing less of fourteen percent by investing with us. Um, but you know, today we're not talking about investments. Uh, we just drop it in there because for some people they're like getting scared already. Like what? I don't. This sounds like a lot of work. But you want to be in the property space you can still invest with other people. I want to jump in into this property investor report. Um, we like investing in Boxback, um, and this is also in the East Rand, kind of like areas. East Rand is not far away from here. Um, and this is a report for the area. So you can choose a suburb, you can choose a, a city, a town, a province i think they can go all the way to a country right um it obviously gives you the selected area that you have chosen that's what boxback looked like it looks like italy is it <laughs> it looks like a like a scorpion almost <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah okay cool um so let's go ahead right what kind of properties are in these areas you know as an investor you're looking into this area like okay so what type of areas there's about 50, 50%, 51% of free holding properties. So I, I like free holding properties. Um, and there's quite a big number of informal housing. This could be informal settlement. It could be anything other than, you know, proper properties. So what is it? Um, you might want to visit this place, obviously, because this is a quite a big number of informal. And this is also quite a big number of other. What is other, right? For you to be comfortable with that area okay um coming down here um i also like this that I, I generally want to look at this here property owned and paid off 20 percent of the people of the properties in this area are paid off hmm. so if i'm talking to these people and i'm an investor and i'm talking directly to the seller these people have paid off their houses. So I don't have big brother to be thinking about another bank or something like that. I'm talking to them so they can make a decision on their houses. And that's 11,000 houses. That's amazing there, right? Okay. Now, property sizes in this area, um, again, it gives you matrices of that. Uh, household sizes, it gives you that as well. I'm just going to fly through all of this, but, you know, draw up a property re investor report for whatever area that you want to jump into, right? What's the demographics in this area? There's more black people, white people, other, you know, I wonder what is other? What is other, Edna? <laughs> I think it might be foreign nationals or something. I'm not really? Sure. Yeah. Okay. What is unspecified? 
<laughs> when people didn't tick the box, I don't know. <laughs> okay. But the good thing is that unspecified, whether they're aliens or not, uh, we don't know, but there's a 0% of other, which is good in this area here. Um, but you can see the, uh, so you can see the demographics of the peoples in the uh, language in the area and the edu type of education, you know, what, what kind of people are you dealing with that are staying there? You know, are they educated or not that educated? You know, I like to say that the more people are educated, the more you can reason with them, you know what I mean? Uh, so I, I generally look at that as well. That's very important to me. Household age, that's also good for me because I want to see um, where's the strongest people, right? In this here, we can see there's a big number of people between the age of 26 all the way to around about 50. So these are working class people or should be working class people. Let's go on to employment statuses. How many of these people are actually employed, right? Okay. There we are, right? How many people are these are employed? Discouraged work seekers, there's like a 1.5 1. 1. of that, right? Too old, unemployed people, there's a 40% unemployed. Oh, sorry, so there's a 40% there's a of people employed, right? And 12% are unemployed. So that's kind of like a good neighborhood here in Boxburg, actually. People work, right? Okay, good. Annual household income. This is my favorite. Because this starts now driving in how much you can actually charge. If you know the people, how much they're earning, you can actually be able to translate this into how much they are able to spend on housing, right? Um, so you can't be banking in, like if you look at this graph here, look at that, right? This is annual incomes, by the way, it's not monthly, right? So if people are earning this much, how much are you going to, you know, what are your property brackets should be? I mean, these are some of the things that you need to be looking out for. Now, um, property transactions, these are the amount of properties that are selling. This is a booming area. You can see that. There you go. Right? You can see that. People that are investing in this area, Properties for investments, there was a big jump here in the 2005, six, all the way to 10, right? It's kind of like almost going into a straight line. Um, rental index. So we, this is our bread and butter. You want to jump into it, Rita? Um, yeah. So what, uh, what happens is that you as a landlord or... Um, the rental agent can actually go and submit payment data of your tenant into TPN, the credit bureau. And they use that information to complete these reports over here. So this is data that actually comes from, from, own, from landlords of people renting out properties. And um, what makes it interesting is that you want to know uh, how many people are actually paying or not paying in the area so you want to check paid on time versus your partial payment the redis did not pay um the oh can you zoom in a little bit my eyes i don't have my glasses with me right um paid on time in the grace period or paid late those things are all green because at least they did pay a partial payment it's not good but you'll see there that um, that is not actually such a huge percentage. So obviously in 2020, it, it dropped, I think, all over the country. Um, and there's actually, if you go down, there is a graph that actually, uh, so there, sorry, there it is. So the town is on 85%, okay, of people in good standing. What does that mean? Paid on time, grace period, or paid late, but you did get your money. Um, it's 85%. National, meaning for the whole country, it's only at 80%, which goes back to what TJ said in the beginning, is that people are working in this area. And they're obviously with good jobs there that's still paying them, even during lockdown or whatever issues we had in 2020. And 
they are still paying better than your national average. So this is still a very good area for rentals for people to invest in. 100%. I think I like what I like about this graph here, or should I say these numbers here, is that for the area it's saying, you know, people that are no paying is 5%. So if you jump in onto your Excel spreadsheet where it says void, mm -hmm. instead of putting in like a thumb sucking percentage, seven, nine, for this area, you're putting a five because that's what the report is saying, right? Um, but for the whole of Gauteng, it, we're sitting around about a 10%. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and at the national, you, we're sitting about at eight. Um, now, if we continue looking on here, um, what's now important is rental now, right? And um, you now have your two bed, one bath, uh, or whatever it is, maybe let's jump on in on here. So what was the market low and what was the market high? There you are of a two bed. So if you are already planning that you're going to be getting five, five, are you in the average or are you two out? I would say you kind of like in the average. Makes sense, yeah? Mm -hmm. Right? Um, for a two bed, if we jump on, there's another two bed there, mm -hmm. right? Three beds, right? The market low, this looks like now houses, right? Right? So the market low is like 2,150. 2, I don't know what kind of a two, three bed is this one, right? Um, but it jumps all the way to, to 10,500. And this is where you get your stats from. There you are, there you are, all the way to 20,000. But now you might also want to just double check all of this based on your, this is Boxback. And in Boxback, there's Boxback South, Boxback North, Boxback Central. You might want to actually to zoom in. And for me, this is the other one tool that I that I really like that I think that any investor should be should be having this. It's it's like this is like primary. You you, you mm -hmm. must not be having even if you have properties and you haven't done this exercise, you should be. You can jump on onto it and you can double check to see whether you're on the money or you're not on the money. Are you, you know, in the, what the market is doing or not? Reta, we have come to nine o'clock. Um, I think maybe we can go in another five minutes, but particularly going into answering some questions. Is that all good? Yeah, perfect. Awesome stuff. Whilst you're jumping on to the co uh, questions there, Reta, I'm going to try to wrap up now and say, this is kind of like the essential tools that one actually needs for us to get through to good deals, right? Um, and if you're following this, and this is actually something that, you know, I, I want to do this, but I actually don't know how to do this. Um, in the comments of the video, we're going to give you, and this is a special for this month, and you're saying you want to learn how to do it. We've put a course together, and that course is literally going to be 5,999, not 5,997, it's going to be for 597 for the month of November, right? We are midway through and uh, you can literally buy that course. Uh, it's normally is for 5,997, but we're giving it to you at a 90% discount, you know? And um, the spreadsheet that we, we were working on there, you also get it for free in there. You want to take away all the questions in there? um i wanted to just quickly drop the link um okay here's one on tpn are these fixed rentals can you increase or decrease your rent or should you always follow what's on tpn okay so the, the this is how i'm going to answer that question right what you're seeing in TPN is exactly what is happening in the area. So these are fellow investors like you and me. So we've got a business that's called Frost Peak and all of our 200 ten tenants plus, we log in how much money we're getting from our tenants, how much money we're charging. And there's other thousands and thousands of other uh, property investors uh, that are also populating the data. So for that reason, 
uh, it's not really fixed. I mean, you could see that it was starting from around about 2,000 all the way to around about 20,000. So you need to look at your property, like where is it, right? Uh, number one, your area, it, sometimes rental can be just about your own street, right? Um, and sometimes it can be about the neighborhood where you're in, you know, uh, that small section of that suburb. It could be in the 20,000s, but actually across the road, it's 5,000. So if they're not fixed, but it's an indication of what others are also charging. And as an investor also, my view is that you you also have an obligation to populate that data so that it can also inform the entire community like us as well. And um, I also want to just so to confirm what is on TPN. Um, you want and you want to make sure is your place actually comparable to what is actually out there in TPN. So what you do, you go back to property 24 again, but this time you go on to rent and you look at properties that are available to rent. And what you can actually do, you'll see whatever they've advertised on there. People generally don't negotiate that hard on rentals. So that so that's a little bit closer as well. But what you can do is you can go and call those agents and say to them that you are looking for a place to rent. And then you go and you look at that place and you can see what is it that they're asking, why are they charging the rent that they're charging. They might charge, or, um, so you know from TPN now that an average is 5,000 for a two bed. Why are these guys asking 8,000? All right, so you can maybe go and view that place as a tenant and see, oh, okay, but it's because this is the only place where you can actually get a garage and there's a pool in the complex, etc., etc. So there's additional things. And you can then adjust your price according to what is actually available in the market at that point in time. If you see that, oh, everybody's places are so fancy and you know that you only have the basics, you don't want to make it um, spend that much capital right now, maybe you drop your price a little bit. Just adjust it to get more, more uh, demand for your area. So that's a sneaky thing I always do as well, especially if I go into a new area, is that I'm always a tenant going and looking for a place to rent. Awesome stuff. I like that. Yeah, so there's many tricks and uh, tips, you know. Um, so, Rita, I'd like to thank you for, for uh, coming through and gracing us with your period um, for this time that we have spent together, you know, just um, uh, talking about being on open mic. You know, having the people actually asking questions, those that have asked questions, thank you, well done. And for those of you who are going to watch this as a recording, that's great too. And if you do have questions, you can still ask them in the comments and we will jump on to it. Any closing comments there, Rita, from your side before we close off for the night? I got some okay. wine waiting for me. <laughs> Come, give me a give me a, a Zoom five. Yeah. Oh no, no, the other way. Side, other side. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get that. Oh day. yeah, I figured it out. I figured it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, enjoy your evening. And um, if there's anything else, you know, um, I think if it wasn't really for education, none of Rita and I would not be here. Um, actually, Rita and I, we actually met in a classroom and uh, the business have been given birth out of the classroom learning and we haven't stopped learning. We're continuously learning and um, we enjoy what we're doing now. And if there's something that is for you, number one, subscribe to this channel so that you can always get the info. And thanks for those that were engaging right now with us. And until we meet again, good night and God bless. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.